Tenor saxophone is the instrument that best expresses my voice. Uh, it's the range, the sound, the uh, ability to be expressive. Bob is uh, certainly uh, one of the most important voices on the, on the tenor saxophone, but, but also as a writer and as a big band leader. Uh, he really helped shape the sound of our times, I think. Bob's uh, style, Bob's uh, musicianship uh, really helped take the band in a, in a uh, a great direction that involved more of the traditional jazz sound uh, with him coming from New York playing that really big fat tenor sound. Bob is a musician's musician. He, he has the respect of, you know, of any, every serious musician I know. Music chose me. I mean, from a very early age, I was just so taken by any music I heard, be it on the radio, in a live setting, uh, on recordings. And I spent countless hours at a piano at home trying to figure out and decipher sounds and notes and chords and songs, things that I'd heard. And uh, it was just something I always spent a lot of time with and do so to this day. It shows me, for sure. He plays every instrument. At sound checks, he'll sit down on the drums. He'll go over to the bass. When we were playing with Mike Stern, he totally cracked up Mike. He would get on Mike's guitar and play some blues stuff so Mike could hear his guitar in the hall. It was really hilarious. He plays piano. He's, you know, and then the various woodwind instruments. My greatest challenge in music is trying to play, on, you know, on a consistently high level. Uh, it's daunting. When Mark left, Russell said, well, what are we going to do? And I said, well, well you know, maybe we, we need to get a, a tenor player, you know, just to do something different. Really just helped us propel uh, more so into the t traditional jazz uh, part of our sound. Uh, his composition contributions have just been outstanding. There's uh, four or five tunes on this new record that uh, show that, that prove that. He's one of those guys that hears the, the music in his brain. He can write arrangements and orchestrations while he's sitting on the airplane or in the tour bus. The Yellow Jackets music is compelling, it's strong, it's honest, it's heartfelt, um, it's the result of a lot of hard work and soul searching and uh, it's very broad in its scope so I think it reaches a lot of different people for a lot of different reasons. feel like I've done that much. I mean, I feel like I'm scratching the surface. I mean, uh, I've, I've been busy as a musician. I know that for 35 years as a professional musician. I'm very grateful to have had this opportunity, but there's so much more to do, you know? Um, just to, in terms of expanding as a player, as a composer, to, to ingest and check out more classical music, more musics of Africa, South America, Eastern Europe, or the Far East. There's so many different approaches, you know, so many different ways to, to combine things. You know, I mean, every time I sit down and practice, I'll stumble onto something, some device or some little thing that is, that will ultimately become part of my repertoire as an improviser or as a composer, you know, and it's just limitless.
It seems like the longer you do this, uh, you become more fluid and kind of get other ideas and find different ways to play with people. And it's kind of ideal to be in a band like the Yellow Jackets for this very purpose, you know, to, to practice things and then come to the table with things you've worked out and try to incorporate it into doing something with the band. And I, I love that. I mean, I, that's, that's what I do. I do it with the Yellow Jackets, with my own quartet, the guys I play with in New York, and my big band. My calling in life is to play music and create music and to, to have some sort of effect on people with this music where it's thought-provoking or inspiring or makes them feel something positive.